welcome to Abdullah Sir Science class. In today's class, we'll be looking at the dispersion of light through a glass prism. If you haven't seen my previous video, please do watch my previous video, as this video is the continuation part of my previous one. So, without wasting much of our time, let's get started. Welcome back. To learn about the dispersion of light through a glass prism, we must have to look at the refraction of light through a glass prism. And before that, we should see what is a prism. A prism is a solid in which we have a three rectangular surface and two triangular surface. A prism makes up of three rectangular surface and three rectangular surface and two a triangular surface all right so when we have this all shaped together we see uh, it as a prism right let's have a look at the prism once this shape what you see is a prism if you see here it is it is a rectangular surface and similarly there is a rectangular surface hiding at this, this side and there is a rect rectangular surface on which it is lying. So there are three rectangular surface and there are two triangular surface. If you see this, this is one of the triangular surface and the back side one is the another one. So in total, there are five surfaces. So this solid object called prism having three rectangular surface and two triangular surface. All right. I hope you understood about this figure. You can see the figure is the three dimensional prism shaped shown in the video. All right. So let's continue to the topic. Now we have to learn about the refraction of light through a prism. How does a light when it is passing from a prism behaves, right? Let's try to understand, right? This is a glass prism and this glass prism is made to lie such that one of the triangular surface is lying down. All right, and it is allowing the light to enter from one surface and we can see the light coming out from the other side. Okay, let's see. This light, what is entering, is called as incident light. And when the light falls on this uh, medium, we know when light enters from rarer medium to denser medium, it bends due to its change of speed, right? Let's understand. This medium is air medium and light is entering from air to glass all right, when the light is entering from air to glass, this incident ray is uh, of course made to incident on this surface with some angle. This angle is called as angle of incidence. All right, to find the refracted ray, one must have to draw normal and now we have, a, we have drawn a normal here. Have a look. This normal is drawn always perpendicular to this plane surface. That means it has a 90 degree of angle made by the plane in which it is entering. This line is interface line and now we know that incident ray had made the angle with incident uh, sorry normal and the light is entering from rarer medium to denser medium because we know air is the rarer medium and glass is the denser medium okay if the light ray passes from rarer to denser medium we know it bends close to normal and hence it goes straight in this way right to understand it clearly I will have to draw a supposed ray. Consider this ray. If the light would have not bent, then the light would have gone straight this way. This is our supposed ray. If the ray, if the glass prism was not there at all, then the light would have passed straight like this, right? Now, this is the supposed ray we know. The light when it is passing from rarer medium to denser medium, it goes close to normal. So normal is lying down to this supposed ray. So the light must bend below that supposed ray. I mean closer to normal. And hence a light ray passes like that. I mean refraction of light takes place and this light bends closer to normal. This is the refracted ray. Okay. Now let's have a look because the light is again passing from a glass medium to air again and hence the refraction happens again. Right? A glass to air. 
So now we know that the glass is the denser medium and air is the rarer medium. So light when it is entering from glass to sorry glass to air then it bends away from normal. We know the light bends away from normal all right. So if light bends away from normal we have to draw normal let's draw normal. Here is the point of incidence and from here we have, a, have we have drawn the normal and normal is drawn always perpendicular remember perpendicular to the plane surface that means again this normal is also making 90 degree right now we understood about the normals we have to draw supposed ray to see where the light ray will go so if there is no prism this light ray would have gone straight this way right so if it goes up if it bends up then it is said that it is going closer to normal then if it is going down if it goes from down then it is said that it is going away from normal but we want the behavior we know that light when it is passing from a denser medium to rarer medium it goes away from normal it goes away from normal so normal is up so we must go away so the behavior of light ray will be this way so the light has bent like that how many times do you see the refraction happening here there is two times the refraction happening light when it is passing from rarer to denser again and denser to rarer again right but let's understand what exactly the prism has done to the light ray a single light ray was entering this way with this angle this was that ray and has bent this way all right the light ray has originated i mean the light ray has incidented the prism in this angle it was going straight this way but got to bend because of refraction the light has to bend this refracted ray is this so let's name them this is the incident ray here is the this second one is the refracted ray and this third one is the emergent ray right what is this emergent ray so now we understood this emergent ray and let's see this angle this angle between the incident ray and emergent ray is the angle of deviation the angle between emergent ray and the incident ray is called as angle of deviation let's write here angle of deviation all right okay very good so uh, just as a recap i'm going to remind again i think light incidenting to a prism has to undergo refraction because the light is passing from air to glass and then light again passes from glass to air again it has to go for refraction the refraction is simply nothing but bending of light so light bends twice here because of which we see a major deviation light bends twice here and because of which we see a major deviation this major deviation is due to the angle between the two surfaces of prism glass prism is not parallel to each other unlike in glass slab a glass slab won't give you maximum deviation it just gives you a shift but when it comes to a glass prism because of these planes angled together uh, you get a maximum deviation in the prism right so light entering from incident ray sorry incident plane and coming out from the emergent plane due to their angle together we see the maximum deviation between incident ray and emergent ray we understood the behavior of light light when it is entering from air to glass it bends there and glass to air it bends there and prisms gives it a major deviation all right so now we have to understand about dispersion to understand the dispersion let's recall the previous class in previous class we have learned that all the colors of light has different wavelength different frequencies and different speed right to remind you we know that the visible spectrum contains violet indigo blue green yellow orange red as the colors of light right violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red violet is having the least wavelength you can see the wavelength is in nanometers and the violet has 400 nanometers of wavelength all right but you see that wavelength is increasing from violet to red which is 400 nanometers to 500 nanometers 600 and 700 so a visible spectrum visible spectrum the light what we can see is lasting from the wavelength of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers right that is violet indigo blue green yellow orange red that is that means from violet to red the wavelength is increasing remember that 
And also remember the speed of the light in vacuum is all same. That means this all colors travels with a constant speed in vacuum, right? They all travel with a constant speed in vacuum. Just a second. They all travel with a constant speed in vacuum. But when it comes to another medium, they bends differently because their speed changes. All of them travels with a different speed when it comes to different medium other than vacuum. So if you see violet uh, having the 400 nanometers of wavelength, it has the least speed. That means it travels very slow. The speed of light of violet is less when compared to the speed of light of red. It means among this all with your color, among this visible spectrum, who travels with the faster speed in the other medium? That is red. Red travels with the faster speed. Red is fast enough, right? Okay, now we understood, we recalled in the previous uh, previous class that violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, violet uh, among them has the least wavelength and the least speed. Red among them has the greatest speed and highest wavelength, okay? So, let's understand the behavior of these all lights when they all travel into the prism. Let's see whether they all bends at this with the same angle or different angle. The color of light entering into this glass prism is white in color. As I already told you, the color from the sun is white in color and this white light is considered of seven major colors. That is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. When they all travel together, you see white in color. So when this white light is entering from one medium into the another medium, it bends. As you already know the behavior of light, light bends when it passes from one medium to another medium. But if you see it closely, we find, we observe that this bending, this bending of light is different. Not all of all the colors of light are bending at the same angle. They are all bending with a different angle. And now why do you think this bending is different? Because this all colors of light has different speed in different medium. So when it was entering from air medium to the glass, the bending of red is least but the bending of violet is most because red travels faster in the another medium right but violet travels slow so it bends most violet bends most violet bends the most but red bends the least and hence again it has to undergo the refraction when it is passing from glass medium to air we know for when the light passes from denser medium to rarer medium it goes away from normal so they are going away from the normal but you see red among them all are being still being on the top resulting and telling you that the red among all of them being faster such that it bends least so red bends the least but violet bends the most violet bends the most but red bends the least right so as you understood about the behavior of light ray due to this reason light if it enters into prism or any pair of medium it bends differently and when they get sufficient enough to get separated among them such that we can able to distinguish them we will be able to see the colors so dispersion is nothing but splitting of white light into seven major colors seven constituent colors when the white light enters into any pair of medium it could be the light bends according to their speed and if the bending is sufficient enough we will be able to differentiate all the colors of light passing through that pair of medium it's not necessary that you only need a glass prism we can see it through a scale right sometimes we see colors in our specs and we see colors dispersion of light in our mobile phone when you are placing the reflective screen of your mobile phone before a white light such as led you may see the colors of light are flashing on the black screen of your mobile that's it let's have a look at the animations we have the animations ready here 
So the color of light I'm choosing here is yellow and the yellow is when it is passing from first pair of medium it's bending this much and second pair of medium it has bent again. Let's adjust this to another angle. And you can see the behavior of light. Light entering from one pair of to the another pair of medium and coming out at the end of the pen, pair. Now let's adjust the color of light. So you can see the color of light. The light entering from one pair of medium to the another pair and it bending it this way. And if we take the co different color of light, their behavior is different. Let's see. If you keenly observe here, here, when I'm adjusting the colors of light, you can see the emergent ray to be bending more at the violet and less at the red. You can see more at the violet and less at the red. But if we take white color, we can clearly see them all. You can see that there is a very slight separation resulting we see the colors of light. If you see, there is not much angle between all these colors, so it is not that separating. But if we see it at the wall, where, which is very far, you may see the colors getting separated more and you may see the colors clearly on the wall. Okay, so white light is constituted of seven major colors and these seven major colors, when they enter from one pair of medium to another pair of medium, they bend separately and they get split it. This is the concept called dispersion. The same thing happens in the rainbow as well. Rainbow, how it is formed? Light when it is entering to the droplets of water, they get separated. And this separation is nothing but you see the magic in the sky. So that's it for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it today. Stay tuned to my channel, Ambitious AB, because we are going to do a small activity on formation of rainbow in a lawn. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stay tuned.